Watch tutorial ko na. Moving your character. First, we create a fold new folder and call it scripts. And then we create a new script. We'll call it player handler. Open the script. Delete the initial start and update function. Create a float variable. Fold h. Create a function. Call get input. Avoid function. Avoid function. Time inside the function h equals input get axis horizontal. And then we create a rigid body uh, variable. Give it a default null value. Create another function called move. Create another variable called speed. And then inside the move function, type rb dot velocity equals new vector tree h times speed zero zero. Get an update function call in get input and call move go back to unity click the player attach the player handler into the player add a component rigid body into the player if necessary move the rigid body component to the above the player handler drag the rigid body component to the rb variable of the player handler and determine the speed to be for example 1 and then we test the game if you press a and b the the player now move uncheck the use gravity from the rigid body component to prevent the player from uh, falling and adjust the speed to a um, number that you feel comfortable with for me, it's 40 right click on the player handler component click copy component stop the game right click on the player handler component again uh, choose space component values we're done and now for the explanation uh, now we are going to make a function to move the player platform uh, from side to side so first of all we have to create a um, script to do that now as i said in the previous tutorial it is best if we stay organized so i'm going to create a, a scripts folder to contain the scripts actually it's better to uh, create another another folder called player and then add the scripts folder into the player folder just to keep things more organized because the script is for the player so inside of the script we create a script to create a script in unity you have to right click on the folder that you where you want to create a script select create and select c sharp scripts as of now c sharp is the only uh, language that unity supports it used to support go and java but um it only supports c sharp now upon creating it you will you can rename your script into um whatever name you want but it is recommended to name your script uh 
um, something meaning meaningful. So, for example, because of this script, we'll be handling the player. We will call it player handler. Another thing to note when naming a script, do not use space because the name of your script will be the name of your class inside the script we will talk about class in a bit and because you cannot use space for the name i recommend you to use uppercase for the first letter of each word if your script title have multiple words you can open the script by right double clicking the newly created script it will start visual studio visual studio is the default script editor for unity that comes with, uh, with unity when you install it you can use any other script editor that you want for example notepad plus plus but i just prefer to use visual studio personally or i am more used to it so opening up we uh, were met with the default start and update function I always um, delete this first because I want to start my script in a clean state. So, let's examine the script line by line. First of all, we have three lines here that states using followed by the name of a library. To use syn certain syntax that isn't default by from the C chart, we have to call a namespace that has the, the syntax that we want to use so for here for example we call using unity engine means that now we are able to use syntax from the unity engine engine namespace notice how the first two are darker than the third that is because um these first two we are not using anything from the first uh, from system collections and system .collection generic, so it's actually you can actually delete those, but I prefer to keep them there because most of the time I'll end up using them anyway. Next, we have public class player handler gonna be here. So public means that this class is accessible by other classes a class is according to google a user-defined blueprint or prototype from which objects are created basically a class combines the fields and methods member functions which defines actions into a single unit typically one script contains one class but one script can contain multiple class if it is necessary and player handler is the name of the class which is also the name of the script it is recommended to keep your the name of your script file the same as your class name the way to name a class is uh, the same as naming your script file um, do not use space Mondo behavior is a class from Unity Engine that contains syntaxes that um, we will be using a lot in creating a game for Unity. It we it contains functions such as start, update, fixed update, and others. Its class is opened by this curly bracket and closed by another one anything that you want to be contained within that class is typed between those brackets next line we have a serialized field uh, the serialized field bracket here affects the variable directly below it the serialized field makes a private variable able to be shown in the unity unity inspector um, you can also do the same um we have by making the variable public but i recommend to use the serialized field instead because if you make a variable public then other classes can access that variable which will 
it more memory. The next one is private rigid body RB equals null semicolon. So private here is um is the accessibility um permission for this variable. So this line is the way for you to create a variable. First, you determine what the um, permission for that variable is, be it private, public, or protected, followed by the type of the variable, followed by the name, and then equals, and then the default value of that variable, and then finish with a semicolon. Private here is the access permission for that variable. Private means that other classes cannot um, access this variable. If you turn it into public, then other other classes can access it. If you turn it into public, it will also appear on the inspector. But if you turn it private, it won't. Which is why we need the serialized field here. Next is rigid body. Rigid body is a component um, that comes from that comes with Unity. In a sense, this rigid body is also a class on its own. That is, but uh, here we will refer it as a component. Rigid body handles the physics simulation of an object. So, if you want your an object to be affected by gravity, for example, or you want an object to be able to get um, flung away when it is hit by a car then you have to attach the rigid body onto the object rb is the name of the variable because the variable type is rigid body i'll call it rb for short and for easier access equals you know you know what the equal symbol means now means nothing empty so this variable is currently now there is nothing that assigned into this variable and then we end it with a semicolon another way to read this is rigid body rb semicolon this will also create the same um variable as the uh, as the one here but I personally prefer to make it clear access permission of my variable and the default value of it. Next, we have serialized field. Another serialized, serialized field that will affect the variable directly below it. Here we have another variable called speed. The variable type is float. A float is a native variable type from c -sharp. it means that this variable contains decimal number for example 0 0 0.1 0 0.2 35 35.6 etc for the default value we'll give it 0 f 0 mean this means the default value of speed is 0 we add the f here to indicate that this, that this number is a float in most cases you don't have to add the f but um, in some cases the code will understand it better if you add this f and it also helps me to know if a value is float or not just by looking at it so i always add the f after the number we cannot make the a native um, default value to null so I make it zero next we have another variable called h it is the same type um, float type variable with the same zero or um, default value but this one does not have a serialized field on top of it which means this um, h variable will not appear in the inspector the reason we are using it anyway is because um, we will need to store 
uh, value into this h variable that will be used in another function so next we have the update function it is written as private void update open and close bracket and then followed by an open and close curly bracket the content of this function is written inside those curly bracket the update function is a function from the mono behavior class anything that um you call within the update function will be called once in every frame of the game so a game is basically um a series of frames that um, of still images that you can control and um it moves every frame to create a an illusion of moving images so in each of those frames the commands within the update function is called here we have gain input a gain input function and a move function so this is the way you call a function the way you call a function is simply by typing the name of the function followed by open and close bracket for the parameters like so but we don't want to call the update function inside the update function because that will cause an error next we continue to the uh, get input function here i created a region named get input a region i usually use a region is used to um separate your script into regions i usually use it um to separate one function from another from another and to uh, conveniently collapse and up expand regions like so because um a lot of the time a function can get so long that it will clutter the whole script to create a region, simply type hashtag region followed by the name of the region. You can use space here. Its region must be closed by hashtag n region. Inside the region, we create a function called private void get input. The writing the format is the same as the update function above private the uh, the access permission for the um for the function void is the return value of the function void here means that this function does not return anything so the the the, the function just goes into the, the void get input is the name of the function um same principle do not use space in the for the name of the function and then open and close bracket here will uh is used for if you want to add parameters to the get input uh, to the function but we will cover that in the future inside the get input function we have each equals input dot get access open bracket quote unquote horizontal close by semicolon this is the way for you to get an input from your keyboard or controller h here is the variable that we created up here so um to ex to refer to a variable simply type its name equals here means that we are going to 
um, assign a value into this each variable the value is this input is um, input is a class from unity engine that handles the input um, from whatever your input device is into the game input is followed by dot the dot here is to access um, the anything this input class has in possession so followed by the dot we can access um, a variable a function or anything that this input class um, has and uh, give the permission access permission as public get access is a function inside the input class that we are going to access from this class just the same as before to call the function to call a function we simply type the name of the function followed by the open open and close bracket however this time we have the horizontal quote unquote horizontal inside the brackets this is because the get access requires a parameter a string parameter to be imputed for it works if you hover your cursor into the get access you can see that it says float input dot get access but uh, open bracket string access name float at the start means that this function returns a float value <laughs> so um that float here is the void here get input does not return any um float any value meanwhile get access with this get get access function which is a float value we will cover about um functions that return value in the future the get as you can see the get access requires a string parameter called access name we can ignore the access name part of the parameter we only need to um focus on the string part a string is the variable type native to c sharp it is a variable type of letters cell horizontal here this whole horizontal word is string to declare a string you have to use the quotation mark at the start and the end of the word moving on to the move function this is another void function called move below inside the function we call rb.velocity equals new vector tree open bracket 8 times speed comma 0f comma 0f semicolon this line is used to uh, to determine the velocity of the rigid body and mainly used to move an object here we have rb rb here is the rigid body that we have up here dot means we are accessing something inside the rigid body velocity velocity is a variable inside the rigid body class so we are accessing the velocity of the rb the velocity variable in rigid body class it handles the velocity of the physics of this rigid body for example you have an ob a rigid body object that moves from point a to point b 
When the object is moved, it's moving from point A to point B. It has a certain velocity that makes the um that makes the rigid body moves. We can set this velocity of the, the velocity by adding the equal symbol here. The velocity is, as you can see, is a factor 3 variable. Vector 3 is a variable type from the Unity engine. It handles the positioning of an object in the 3D space. As mentioned in the previous part, the 3D space has in Unity has three axes, the X, Y, and Z axis, and thus vector three, because there are three vectors that we will be dealing with. So, to assign a vector three variable, we first need to create a new vector three. We cannot simply change the x, y, or z of the velocity separately. It has to be a new one. To create a new vector tree, simply declare new followed by the variable type. In this case, vector tree, open bracket, and then here we have the values of that vector tree. To determine the value of the fact of a vector tree, we have to determine the x, the x value, the y value, and the z value. It's separated by a comma. The y and z value is zero because we do not want to move our platform up and down or back and front. But we do want to move our platform left and right. And thus, we are moving the platform to the x-axis. Here, to, de to determine how much we are moving to the platform to the x-axis, we will use this um, calculation. We will multiply the value of each variable that we just um, obtain from the get input axis here from the get input function here and then multiply it by the speed which is which we declared over here so this means it will move along the x-axis um, depending on our input of the horizontal axis multiplied by the speed that we want the platform to move. The get asset function here will return the a decimal value between minus 1 to 1 with the default it being a 0. So, for example, if we have the speed of 5, we input the horizontal axis by pressing the A key on our keyboard it will become it will become a minus one because it's going to the left so that means in this calculation we will have minus one times five which equals to minus five that means the new velocity will be minus five comma on the x-axis zero on the y-axis and zero on the z-axis that would make the rigid body move to the left by 5 value. So, that is the script that we um, that we need now. Let's go back to Unity and test it out. So, we have created a script edit. We are not done. First, we must add the rigid body component to the player. The way to do that is by clicking the add component down here and type in rigid body on the search bar and you will be given these three options a rigid body 
What is it, buddy? Two D and a new script. So, what we what we want is a rigid body. The rigid body two D. If if we is if we want uh, to create for this object to have the physics in a two D um, world, a new script is simply to create a new script called rigid. So we click the rigid we click the rigid body to create a rigid body component. Now our player will have a rigid body component. It has the mass, drag and all the stuff. It also has the use gravity option. We want we will want to uncheck the use gravity so that our um, platform doesn't fall down after that we want to add component again and type player handler to add the player handler script into the platform so now we have the player handler script after that we can drag and drop the rigid body component into the rb field here or you can also drag and drop the player its object itself into the rb field it will automatically search for the um, rigid body component and then as for the speed i will add i will input 40 as i find it the most suitable you can change that to any uh, number that you feel um is suitable for the speed of the platform now to test out the game you have to click here on the play button when you click it your unity will uh, be a bit darker and the play button will turn blue and you will also be um, um, automatically directed to the game window here you can uh, test the game as you can see by pressing A and D on the keyboard I can move the Player left and right. However, there is a problem here. If I keep pressing D, it will simply move all the way uh, outside of the camera. We don't want that. And if I press A, it will move all the way to the left without anything to stop it. We have to fix that. But, we will do it in the next part. For now, thank you for watching. Um, and good luck. Asimah!